This week in Jamaica now, a rogue corporate area bus driver arrested, charged and convicted after making an illegal turn. Peter Phillips meets with Peter Bunting after bruising presidential election. What did they discuss? 2,500 people listed as missing in the Bahamas. Sprinting sensation Brianna Williams seems set to miss the World Championships after doping result. More worry for Jamaica's women's football program and former Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Ken Baugh to get an official funeral. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. One of the chaos creators in the corporate area has been caught and punished and the police are promising a continued crackdown on rogue motorists. 47-year-old Ikana Sparks of Golden Springs, St. Andrew was fined $5,000 for careless driving a day after a photo of his dangerous maneuver went viral on social media. In addition, he was fined $10,000 on an outstanding warrant for having no driver's badge. Sparks was arrested on Wednesday and appeared in court on Thursday where he pleaded guilty to both offenses. The bus operator was captured on camera illegally driving through a pedestrian opening on the barrier on Constant Spring Road in St. Andrew. The barrier was opened the day before following concerns that it intercepted the pedestrian crossing, forcing people to hurdle over the structure to cross the road. The police are urging people to continue to send images and videos of motorists breaching the Road Traffic Act to their tip line at 1-876-591-5671. Days after his narrow election win, People's National Party President Dr. Peter Phillips held crucial talks with his defeated challenger Peter Bunting. The meeting was held at an undisclosed location and included key members of both campaign teams. Shortly after the meeting, both contenders arrived at Gordon House but did not answer questions from reporters. A day later, however, Phillips held a press conference and said a number of agreements were reached in talks with Bunting. He also announced that both teams will be abandoning their campaign slogans. And Phillips announced that the PNP will conduct an internal investigation into claims of vote buying and other allegations that surfaced during the bruising three-month campaign. The National Security Ministry is reporting that some 240,000 traffic tickets have been cleared following major software modifications to Jamaica's traffic ticket management system. The ministry says the system is centralized and web-based and was introduced in September 2010 by eGov. It further explains that the major update ensures accurate information is available to government agencies such as the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the courts, among other stakeholders. The National Security Ministry says the 240,000 traffic tickets were recorded as failed payments from September 2010 to April 2019. It's all but confirmed that Brianna Williams will not be competing at the 2019 World Championships in Doha, Qatar. The young Jamaican sprinter will face the Independent Anti-Doping Disciplinary Panel on September 23, 24 and 25. That's a day before the start of the World Championships. In August, Williams had made a request for an expedited hearing through her representative, Dr. Emir Crown. She has been named in Jamaica's 55-member Doha team, but it is unlikely she will be able to make it. Williams tested positive for the banned diuretic HCTZ in her sample taken at the National Senior Championships in June. Williams had placed third in the 100 meters in 10.94 seconds. There was more worry in the Jamaican football program this week, days after three senior women's players announced their withdrawal from the national program over outstanding pay Head coach Hugh Menzies followed suit. He and members of his technical staff are threatening to walk off the job if they are not paid by Wednesday, September 25. Jamaica's reggae girls are set for the Olympic qualifiers, which run from September 30 to October 8. But if members of the team are not paid, it could derail their efforts. Meanwhile, the JFF is promising that the payments will be made later this month. The Bahamas government says 2,500 people have been listed as missing after Hurricane Dorian, but the names have yet to be checked against the rosters of people evacuated from the devastated islands or staying in shelters. Carl Smith, a spokesperson for the Bahamas Emergency Management Agency, says he expects the list to shrink. However, the death toll has now reached 50, more than a week after Dorian smashed thousands of homes on the country's Grand Bahama and Abaca Islands, Search and rescue crews are still making their way through the ruins. While power has returned to much of Grand Bahama, the electrical infrastructure around Marsh Harbor, Abaca's largest city, has been destroyed. <laughs> former Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Ken Baugh has been accorded an official funeral. Baugh, a former Minister of Health as well as a former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, died on September 1 at the age of 78. 
On Monday, the cabinet approved the official funeral. The service will be held on September 19 at the University of the West Indies Mona Chapel at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Meanwhile, condolence books will be opened from Tuesday, September 17 through to Thursday, September 19 at the Houses of Parliament and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at unerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, the Gleaner is celebrating 185 years this September 13. Here are some of the sights and scenes from the celebration in Kingston. Going down when I see the newspaper going down.